So I was in Target and I saw that they had so many cute placemats, you guys. There were these straw ones and then the kicker was this faux leather. It looked so real and I knew I had to make a purse with these. Here's a couple of what they had. They were all about three to five dollars. I got these purse handles from Amazon and they came in a three pack and surprisingly I found these at the thrift store in a three pack for 99 cent. They're the exact ones from Target. And this cognac one, oof, chef's kiss. So beautiful. I wound up not using the black one, but I probably will in the future. But this is my inspiration picture from Lulu's, and I figured I can make this, you guys. <laughs> so the first one is going to be pretty similar to that one. I folded the placemat in half, and then I used my handles to kind of gauge where I want to sew the purse closed. I added some pins to make sure that I kept it closed, and then I went ahead and took it to the sewing machine. So when I was done, I put the handle down where I wanted it to be and I marked where I'm going to be sewing the handle down. This is actually a sewing marker. It has invisible ink on one side and iron away ink on the other side. So really cool, highly suggest. So then I just took some thread and I tacked down the handles just so they wouldn't slide around. After that, I got some yarn and I used these yarn needles. And I just went in like a spiral motion around the handle. I made sure not to overlap any of the thread because I wanted it to kind of span out a little. So the next placemat is pretty sheer. And I don't want to put anything in there and like have things falling out or whatever. So I'm just going to be adding a liner inside of it. I just took any fabric, doesn't matter as long as it's close to the color of your purse that you're going to be making. And I just went ahead and cut out a rectangle around it slightly bigger than the actual placemat. Now flipping this over, there's kind of like this hump uh, or seam allowance there where the placemat was folded over and I'm just pinning down the fabric right there so that way when you flip it over you won't be able to see the raw edge and then I'm going to just go ahead and take it to the sewing machine. This is what it wound up looking like. It looks so neat and professional when you do it this way. Then I'm going to just fold down the other side. We're going to pin it down and sew that down also. Now to just go back a little bit here, you guys, don't sew all the way to the edge like I did because I had to go back and use a seam ripper to take out some of the thread. You want to leave a little bit loose so that you can fold it over like I did and then you're going to go ahead and iron it down so it's a little easier and neat to sew down. So I went ahead and sewed that down and here's what it looks like. Now to keep this bag closed, I'm going to be adding some magnetic snaps. These can be purchased anywhere where your craft supplies are sold and even on Amazon. So I'll go ahead and link some below. But these things are pretty magnetic. Once I finally got them pulled apart, I went ahead and laid it down so that I can mark where I want those prongs to go in. Now I would suggest snipping a slight bit the way that I did and then making another snip. You don't want to make too big of a snip because when you put the prongs in it's going to stretch the fabric anyway. So if you try to make the exact size of the prong, it's just going to be too loose. So that's in and then they have a back that goes on there so you're going to have to go in between and add that back. I would then suggest putting the other side of the magnetic snap on so that you'll have an exact measurement for where you need things to be placed and go ahead and mark the prong holes for that as well. Then I went ahead and put the prongs in and you can see here how they're sticking out. I'm putting the backing on 
and then you'll just have to bend down each prong. It's kind of like closing one of those manila folders except the prongs are a lot more stiff. And voila! We have a closed bag. So now I'm going to sew down the remaining opening on the other side of the purse. And now that is done. Snap it and we have a purse. Except it needs to be sewn completely. <laughs> so I went ahead and took it back to the sewing machine to sew each side of it closed. So I did a straight stitch here. I would suggest probably doing a zigzag stitch because it's a little more hardy of a stitch and will prevent it from opening again. Uh, but you know, what ifs, whatever works for you. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to do our last purse. We're gonna be using the cognac faux leather placemats. We're gonna put two of them together and throw a handle on top. And this is gonna probably be the easiest one yet. So let's go ahead and do that one. All right, so I have both of the placemats here and I'm just gonna tell you guys, I wound up not using these handles. It was not the vibe for me, like after I you know, played around with it a little bit. But I did use them for reference in terms of how big of an opening I wanted on the purse. And I went ahead and took it to the sewing machine to sew it closed. Now I would suggest moving a little slower with this process because the distance of the stitch is kind of longer. And you want to match up the stitch on your sewing machine to the stitch on the tablecloth if that makes sense. So like I said, you guys, I was not feeling the leather to wood mashup that was going on with that handle. So I got a piece of strapping from a purse that I got from Goodwill that matched pretty similarly. And I cut off the strap and I seam ripped it to open it up. So this little strap I'm going to be using as like a loop to kind of catch removable handbag straps. So you can get removable straps from an old purse from Goodwill or you can get removable straps from Amazon. But this is just going to be the little loop that catches the latch on the removable strap. So I put that in there and I took it back to the sewing machine and we're just going to sew over this. Now because this is going to be carrying a lot of weight depending on how much you put in your purse, I would suggest going over it, going backward, and then going forward again. Now if you're doing this by hand, then just do the same thing by hand, back and forth so that it will be really in there and it won't rip out while you have your stuff in your bag. So this was a strap from another purse that I had and I went ahead and hooked it on and there we have it. Okay you guys, so we are done with the purses. I'm so excited to show you guys what they turned out like. So this is how the first one turned out. It's so stinking cute you guys, I can't even. Let's just take a look at that detail you guys. If you remember I used yarn for those. It's so many things inside and look, look how it looks. You can hold it like that. You can maybe hold it like this here. I have my phone inside of here. What else? I have my wallet inside of here. I have some lip gloss. And I also have my AirPods. So you guys, it's definitely holding the things. The next one is this one. Really cute, super neutral. I put the snap on the inside of this. I also added the handles. I used the same technique for adding the handles, except this time I used jute, like jute cord. I added handles because after holding it, I wanted to hold it like this, but womp, you see what happens when you do that. So I added the handles on there. They were perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this one up just so you guys can see what it looks like. She's hefty. She's holding the things, you guys. Oh, I love this. It's so cute. I can't. 
This is the last one that we use the two placemats with. This placemat was like everything that I ever needed in my life. It's so cute. This strap that I got was from another purse that I had. I would totally suggest maybe going to Goodwill and finding you a purse around the same color. Cut the strap off and sew it right in here. They also have straps available on Amazon, so I'll go ahead and link a couple of those below. And I'll go ahead and link the handles that I used for my bags. This is like a crossbody bag. I would love for this strap to be a little shorter maybe, so that the bag comes right here. Let's go ahead and fill her up. Wallet, phone, lip gloss, AirPods. This is how it looks once I fill it up. What would I do so that it doesn't look so chunky? It's a big purse, so it makes you want to put a lot of stuff in here. I don't know, you guys. This one seems to be <laughs> a good idea. Maybe if you could... What could I do different? I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Would you still make this one? Would you still wear it? You could also just make it one of these because this this faux leather is like, this faux leather is a situation. Definitely would suggest just go ahead and make it a little taco purse like this one because um, I don't really know what's going on here. But that's okay. You know, we live and we learn with these DIYs. The whole point is to just get in there and do it. And we did it. <laughs> Alright you guys, so that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell because we're going to be doing so many DIYs this year from home decor, home renovations, fashion, fashion accessories. And you guys, I'm also open for all of your suggestions. So if there's anything that you guys want me to DIY, go ahead and comment below or you can hop on over to Instagram, send me pictures of things that you'd like for me to replicate and we can do all of these DIYs together. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!